microsatellite uh, uh, status is done in different ways. Uh, we primarily rely on IHC. You can do it through PCR. Uh, but IHC is simple, quick. Within a couple of days, you'll have your answer. And now more and more it's being reported as part of the next genomic sequencing panel. Um, and we heard, recently heard that uh, Garden 360, through their liquid uh, biopsy test, is able, is able to report out very accurately uh, the presence of microsatellite instability. So any of those actually, at this point of time, if you don't have tissue, get the blood. If you have the tissue accessible and you can run it very quickly, most pathology labs, including in small, smaller community hospitals, can, can run an IHC test for MSI high. If not, it's part of uh, you know, your, your uh, next generation sequencing. It's reported out. Uh, a good surrogate for MSI high. In fact, as, 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 as we said, you know, for, for MSI, MSI high is only a surrogate marker for uh, a large muta mutational burden. So tumor mutation burden is really what drives response to immune therapy. So for that purpose, TMB could be more than enough. Uh, MSI high would be actually good for us for genetic stratifying. But TMB would be more than enough to decide on whether we want to treat patients with immune th uh, therapy agents or not. That also doesn't only link to MSI high, but also links to Paul E, Paul D, and check. Uh, uh, so you have a lot of different ways. Uh, to identify MSI status and lots of different ways to decide on who is that patient that would be optimally or optimal for, uh, for treatment with immune therapy agents. So one of the uh, emerging targets in uh, colorectal cancer, which I think is also going to transform how we care for about 4%, another 4% of patients with metastatic colorectal cancer, is that subgroup of patients with HER2 amplifications. And we knew from a couple of studies with trastuzumab, pertuzumab, as well as trastuzumab and lapatinib, that these patients can exhibit 20 to 30 percent response rate. Uh, and these responses can be quite durable. In fact, the NCN guidelines just included uh, those uh, uh, doublets or doublet therapies into, into the guidelines, the category 2B, uh, but they're there and these are published facts. There are a number of studies that are ongoing, uh, both nationally and internationally, uh, trying to confirm the role of these uh, HER2 target strategies. There's a SWOC study looking at the combo versus uh, uh, an, a, cetuximab plus irinotecan. and there is uh, another study that will be presented at ESMO. Actually, two of them will be presented at ESMO, one with from Japan with trastuzumab and pertuzumab, the other one from our uh, research network with tucatinib, which is an oral tyrosine kinase inhibitor and trastuzumab. Uh, the sum of all these studies continues to point out in the same direction. These are agents that work incredibly well in patients with uh, uh, metastatic colorectal cancer that have HER2 amplification. The other important aspect about HER2 amplifications or HER2 amplified colorectal tumors, those patients do not seem to respond well to EGFR inhibitors, uh, and that has mostly been validated retrospectively, hoping for more prospective validation. But it makes sense that those patients probably should be excluded from EGFR inhibitors.